What's up, everybody? I'm Sifu James Darby, and just for clarity, I'm a master at Wing Chun Kung Fu and a Twitch affiliate at Nightmares 330. What's up, everybody? This is another episode of Just for Clarity with Kayla Dunlap. Y'all, I got my Sifu here. <laughs> this is about to be a really, really good episode. We're going to talk about Wing Chun today, y'all. This is James. We'll have him introduce himself. James, hello, please hello. tell us what you do, what you love. Um, so I'm a uh, my James James Darby. I'm a uh, second. You know, my father was into Wing Chun since the '90s. I got in around the same time. I've been doing this about 30 years. Um, I attained the uh, rank of uh, Sifu at level 10 in 2019. Um, I I love Wing Chun. I love talking to Wing Chun. I love teaching Wing Chun. Um, I can answer any questions anybody ever has, and um, I'm here to. Try to get out of school out in the open. Absolutely, the Darby School, y'all. It's, it's, I am also part of the Darby School. I'm still struggling on the very, very low, <laughs> <laughs> on the low end. But look, y'all, I can still. All right, all right. Anyway, so let's get to some questions mm -hmm. with you now. Can you tell me? You did tell us just a little bit in your intro mm -hmm. about how you got into Wing Chun. Can you explain on that a little bit more? Um, so I was eight, and uh, my father came home and um. He uh, said, throw some punches for me. So that was the first sentence I heard in my inlet into uh, Wing Chun. Yep. Um, and then, uh, you know, I got in trouble a lot as a boy. So uh, <laughs> that became my discipline. <laughs> uh, so I didn't like it. I didn't like it for the first seven years that I did it because it was it was tied to discipline. I got in trouble. I may have to sit in the stands for 30, 40 minutes. Or uh, sit in the frog stance for an hour. Do That's almost like in your answer. 2,500 punches. <laughs> uh, may have to do a technique 4,000 times. Uh, but in the end, uh, when I did start liking it, I had those tools to my advantage because I had done all of those things and realized that the reps is what makes your wing chun strong. Absolutely. It is. The more you do it, the more proficient you are. He told me the first time I went, he's like, <clears throat> I can definitely tell when you've been doing five punches versus a thousand punches. Mm -hmm. And then from your thousand punches to your 10,000 punches. So you can't hide. You can't hide in Wing Chun. Definitely can't. All right. So my next question is, so what makes Wing Chun so different from any other fighting style? Like it's, it's, it's in a class all of its own. Why do you think that is? Um, for one, the principles, um, the principles were created. Um, based off of the existing styles that were available at that time. Right. Um, so they took all the principles from all of those existing styles and created a style that they could learn faster and be more proficient against the other styles. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't allowed to practice Wing Chun or any Kung Fu at that matter at the time. Right. So they needed something that they could do behind closed doors and become a fit, uh, proficient with it. So like in like small tight spaces. Yes. Like uh, so uh, basically uh, any 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 Kung Fu is going to be uh, associated with animal movements. Mm -hmm. Right. So you hear something like bear claw and uh, tiger style. If you hear an animal in the name, it's usually going to be Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. Wing Chun is different because it incorporates other styles, uh, i.e. Taekwondo, things like that from other countries. So it actually makes it different from everything else. Um, you also, uh, what makes it different is dual movement of the limbs. If we are one of the only ones that will block and attack at the same time. Yeah. Um, and that is not just to say you would block with one hand and punch with the other. You could also throw a kick at the same time. Uh, there's a very, very known picture of Wing Chun artists throwing a front inside front kick and throwing a block with the left hand and a punch with the right hand. Mm. Um, these are things that no other style does. 
And then another thing that makes us unique is that we employ a neutral side stance. All right. It's neither a neutral stance or a front stance, but it, it allows you to get to your opponent and defend simultaneously. He was horrid. That's <laughs> very <Right>. hard. <laughs> Footwork is hard. It's hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now that we've kind of got like a, a, a background of Wing Chun, I'm very, very sure that all of us have seen an It Mom movie, a Kung Fu movie, right? So we've seen Wing Chun practice in many different ways. What would you say would is like the most realistic movie version of Wing Chun that you've seen? Um, I... I, so if we stick to the Yip, Yip Man, um, uh, Yip Man 2 was probably the most realistic. He probably mm -hmm. did the most realistic moves in there. Um, so Donnie Yen, he does what we call modified Wing Chun. Um, I do traditional Wing Chun. And uh, the movements in part one were 100% modified movements. Um, and then two, you saw where he... Um, you know, he implemented more traditional. Yeah. Um, and that's from talking with uh, Grandmaster William Cho. So, for instance, in that movie, he uh, had a situation where the the tie fighter was uh, met him in the in the in the, uh, in the elevator. Yeah. And okay. The the fight broke out into the stairs, and the tie fighter dropped to his hand and threw a triple level kick, and Yip Man blocked it with one movement. Yeah. The shield. He he, he blocked it with a Wing Chun shield. Yeah. That's a traditional move versus. Okay. You know, so the punches are very, very noted, and that's 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 one thing that you can identify Wing Chun with. Mm -hmm. um, but that's also one thing you can identify him with is dealing with multiple attacks. Yeah, with one simple movement. So, what would you say is the fakest? I okay. So, I I, I think that was it. Man, one where he was fighting what like twenty of the yes. the Japanese the fighters yes. and for rice, mm -hmm. right? So, y'all remember that part of the movie? So would you say that part on Wing Chun was is realistic or do you um, feel like it was 20 fighters, like he said in the movie, just run. <laughs> uh, 20 people. Now, uh if if I'm fighting four people, mm -hmm. then you know, I'm not running from four people. Um, I'm gonna assess the situation. Mm -hmm. We are highly trained in uh multiple attacks, so um it was very realistic uh when it came to his defenses. But his attacks were mm -hmm. for the movie. For instance, he walked up on the young boy at the at the end and immediately started throwing Wing Chun punches right at him. That's he like not, he like yes. all the way down to that's the not, floor. That's that's more for theatrics. <laughs> um, please don't try that at home. <laughs> Rolling uh, and punching all the way yes, down. Because <laughs> that's the the, the 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 opponent became a. a a, a boxing bag, a boxing bag. Yeah. And you know, the your that's the most important thing in self-defense is to realize that your opponent is fighting back. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is Bruce Lee. Because a lot of people outside of Itman, Donnie mm -hmm. Yen, uh, uh, all that kind of stuff, like how does Bruce Lee fit into that? Because he has mm -hmm. his own version of uh, Wing Chun and boxing and all mm -hmm. that is called uh, Jeet Kune Do. Mm -hmm. Jeet Kune Do. So, like, how does uh, Bruce Lee fit into the Wing Chun legacy? Um, so, um, I I will put a disclaimer out that anything I know about Bruce Lee, I've never met him, um, obviously. But what I know of him is from what I've heard from Grandmaster Chung, William Chung. Uh, Grandmaster William Chung was responsible for introducing Bruce Lee to Wing Chun. Mm -hmm. um, Grandmaster Chung was one of his storied fighters in China. He grew up with Bruce Lee. Um, you know, his father being the uh, chief of police and Bruce Lee being the thug that he was. <laughs> they had a lot of uh, interchange interactions. interactions together. So uh, <laughs> they spent a lot of time together. Yeah. And um, obviously when 
Grandmaster Chung got into uh, Wing Chun, obviously Bruce was interested. Mm -hmm. So he introduced him to Wing Chun. Um, Yip Man taught him a modified version of Wing Chun um, because of his attitude. Um, and he took to it very well. From what I understand, Bruce Lee was one of the ultimate students. Mm. He didn't want to learn everything. He wanted to perfect every movement. He didn't want to move on to the next movement until he perfected one movement. And um, throughout the time of him ascending through the, the style, he made it to a level seven. He was a level seven senior C die, which is a black sash. And um, he decided to get out of Wing Chun because it limited his movement. Mm -hmm. And what that means is uh, in a modified version, they kind of lean and um, slide their feet. Whereas traditional, we pick our feet up and we don't lean. We keep 50-50. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that being said, he created another style that used Wing Chun, but eliminated some of the weaknesses, like yeah. sliding your feet, mm -hmm. uh, uh, attacking well, the only in the middle. He knew because it was in exactly the because he version. only knew modified yeah. version. Exactly. So, based on his knowledge, he wrote a book saying that uh, William Chung was the only man that he could ever he could never touch, and this is why he attacked on a center on a center line, which we know as Wing Chun practitioners and traditional. We only attack on the central line. So, um, what he did was he created, which is genius, and. Um, Created Jeet Kune Do um, based off of Wing Chun. Um, and then whatever he did for martial arts was profound. Yes. Uh, it's untouchable. Absolutely. The things he did for any martial arts in America and across the world. So mm -hmm. that's what I know of Bruce Lee. Chun is banned from competition. You don't see a lot of Wing Chun uh, practitioners doing um, competitions or even UFC. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Um, so we were allowed in um, competition back in the early 80s. Um, uh, um, my father's uh, teacher, uh, Master Clayton, um, he was in some of those tournaments and won some. Um, he was very famous in the, in the, in the early 80s and, and early 90s. They took us out of competition because it was too proficient. So basically, <laughs> imagine yourself as a fan... And you see a guy kick a guy in the leg six times and the fight's over. You nine hundred dollars for this ticket <laughs> and the the card fight that you came to see mm -hmm. ended. <laughs> yeah, six six kicks to the back of the leg and fight in, over in one round. So where's the rest of the show? Yeah, the object of Wing Chun is to end the fight very quickly. We don't want to we don't want to put a show on. Mm. What would you say is the most difficult part about learning Wing Chun or just being a Wing Chun, Wing Chun practitioner overall? Um, aside from finding a partner. <laughs> right. Uh, the reps. The reps. Uh, uh, I always say that boxing can't be faked. Um, you don't see a box. If a dude or a, we, or a woman is boxing, they're going to be in shape because you can't you can't ignore the reps. Yeah. You got to punch that bag. You got to do your combinations. You got to keep yourself in shape to be able to make it around. Mm -hmm. So boxing can't be fake. And it's the same for Wing Chun because think of it this way. If you're in a fight, there are 40,000 iterations of things that can happen mm -hmm. in a fight. 40,000. Prepare yourself for all 40,000 of those and know what you're going to do to each 40, each one of those iterations right. is impossible. Mm -hmm. So you have to create what's called muscle memory, yeah. which means your muscle reacts to whatever they do before your brain does. Right. So in essence, um, Grandmaster would always say they're trying to put muscle on their brain, but we're trying to put brains on our muscle. The basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're yeah. doing the opposite. So mm -hmm. making your muscles smarter, they're able to react. So all I can say to somebody when they ask, what are you going to do if I do this? I don't know what I'm going to do. It's I just going to happen. It's going to be something in Wing Chun. <laughs> it's going to be something in Wing Chun, and it's going to stop that that yeah. attack. That's all I know. Right. Tell us about like your first. I'm not going to say practical use, but your first time using Wing Chun outside of just 
in a practice setting? I had about two weeks left of high school. And uh, I, I graduated from Baltimore City High School, uh, Maryville, um, represent. <laughs> and um, <laughs> we, uh, we were sitting in the auditorium waiting for school to start. I had gotten there much earlier than, and I had my headphones on, and I had a young guy that kept bumping the back of my seat. He was sitting there with two young ladies, showing off. He was a 10th grader. Mm. I had no, he, he had no idea who I was. Um, I knew who he was. I was a senior, so I, I was very popular, so I knew everybody. And um, he uh, he bumped my seat, so I took my headphone off, and I told him, I said, hey, man, watch what you're doing. And uh, he decided that he didn't want to stop, so he stepped out into the aisle. So naturally, as a uh, fighter, I stepped out into the aisle. <laughs> um, and uh, he threw a round punch at me. And I did what was called a grunsal. It was one of my favorite techniques. It is where you put two blocks together to deal with a round strike. Mm -hmm. But when I did it and I blocked it, when I put them on the blind side, I actually was a little too proficient. Uh -oh. And it, it took its balance a lot. So I wasn't able to finish the technique. <laughs> Only thing I could do because he was so far from me was kick him in the ribs. So I kicked him in the ribs and he fell on the floor and, you know, they tried to suspend me, but I'm like, it was two weeks of high school left. Yeah. We're, thin, yeah, we, we're, we're done. <laughs> I'm an honor roll student. So, um, but the first thing I did was call my father, call my father. <laughs> <Are you okay>? <laughs> <laughs> keep in mind, this is 2000. So I don't have a cell phone. Yeah. Um, yeah. The way till you get, <laughs> wait till I get you your get home. See, y'all young folk that's watching this, y'all don't know what that means. Yeah. You have to pick up the link. It's an actual, it's a device. Okay. You pick it up and there's a cord attached to it. And then there's another cord at the back of the device that connects to the wall. It's called a house phone. Unless you had a little bit more money and then you had the wireless house phone that you put into the receiver part. I got home and I was super excited, super excited. And I thought I would be there. I said, Dad, it works. It works. And that's when I fell in love with Wing Chun. Mm -hmm. And um, it's funny because now my students, when they use it, they call me. <laughs> hey, see, fool, it works. I said, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> it's fun. Um, I have, since I've been practicing Wing Chun and, and I have, I can't even really explain like the difference because but before I started practicing Wing Chun, I um, boxed a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And then those who know me, y'all know I just used to be fighting in the streets. Like just, <laughs> what's up with it? Like we could throw hands like Atlanta street fighting. We ain't gonna, we ain't gonna slap box. We gonna fight, fight. So like <laughs> it took a lot uh, for me to really get the discipline part of it. Because I'm not just randomly throwing punches and not thinking about, you know, the end result. It's just, you're going to get these punches. Wing Chun is completely different from that. So what would you say about someone who's, you know, probably thinking about pursuing or practicing Wing Chun, but doesn't really mm -hmm. know where to start, how to start, or the best way to go about doing it? Because you have a YouTube channel. I do. Where you, you show what it's supposed to look like, it needs to look like. Tell us about that a little bit. Like people who are thinking about it and yeah. how, how should they should pursue it. So I have an analogy first. Um, I was taught in the Marine Corps um, range coaching um, that if you, if you have, if you can shoot, you can shoot a gun, um, it's great. And you can have great aim. Mm -hmm. um, but if you put a technology behind it or if you put a, a, uh, a style behind it practice. and practice that, then you can't go wrong. And it also works for people with bad aim. So this is what Wing Chun does. It, it, it eliminates the guess what. What is something that you add that's different from any other Wing Chun practitioner that they would look for or even mm -hmm. pursue? So um, we, we, we're, we're, all given, we're all given a book from Grandmaster Chung of how to run a school, mm -hmm. all right? And it's a book of, it's, it's how to run a business. It's how to maximize your profits, um, 
a lot of schools make their students students and they are they are strictly that they are a number on a page they are there to get me money so we put them on contract and uh we slow them along it takes them seven years to do something um there's a rubric that they need to follow so a level two should only know certain things um out of the 10 levels and um it just slow rolls everything well the way my, my father and i teach is we give you what you're ready for we give you what you're ready for you can actually become a level 10 in our system in probably about three to four years mm. but it depends on your dedication because you come to class to learn the next thing you go home and do the, and, and learn Kung Fu. You learn Kung Fu by getting in the mirror and doing the reps. And that's the only way to do it. All right. So the way we do it and the way we offer is 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 accelerated, uh, but it's it's based on what you yeah, want to put yeah. into it. Yeah. And this way you can get what you put out of it. What you put in it, you can get that out of it. Uh it's it's I think it's the best way. Um, because I'm not taking your money. I'm not stealing your money. Right. I don't say, hey, come to class four times a week. Because what are we going to work on if the reps are what you're supposed to be doing? Yeah. I feel like that's stealing money. And that's what I bring to the table is I'm not there to take your money. I'm there to teach you Kung Fu. Absolutely. And I, I can concur. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still struggling with the footwork. <laughs> Still, I have to struggle with the footwork, but my arms still fight, y'all. I'm just cute. Just, just say that right there. Put that Practicing. Up. I saw the two couple of punches you threw. They were. They yeah, were yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I'll be in the mirror if I don't do nothing else because I can't get that footwork. My hands gonna be. Ooh. All right, y'all. They say y'all know. Just for clarity, we are gonna have a Wing Chun fight. I'm gonna lose, but look, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get a, a few of them rolling punches. In. I'm trying to tell y'all now. It's gonna be. I'm gonna hit that part of it in. <laughs> Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Question Roulette with Kayla. Now, back to you, me. All right, if you could choose one song to play when you walk into the room, what would it be? Every time you walk in, in the door, it, wherever you at, this song gonna play, baby. What's your song? Biggie, Nasty Boy. Well, how I go? How I go? It's uh, you nasty boy, you nasty. That's really that's like my favorite song. That's that was my theme song back in the nineties. Okay, okay, all right. So, what is the most disgusting thing you've ever seen? <sighs> Childbirth. What? Childbirth. That's a beautiful moment. <sighs> It don't look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it is a beautiful moment. It's great. It doesn't look beautiful. No. Just, mm. Faint worthy. Mm -mm. It's a lot of liquids. It's a lot of stuff going on <laughs> down there. Mm -mm. We usually don't see it, but. Yeah. We, we see just, it. <laughs> we just get the baby after you just slap it on our face. Yeah. Just put they the get baby. to look from the top and feel the pain and stuff. We yeah, got to We got to actually see it. The open. Mm. When you see that head come out, <laughs> bruh, <laughs> <laughs> never again. <laughs> I mean, mm -mm. that means you could just love her so much more mm. for all of that disgusting sight that you saw that brought such a beautiful little person hey, into the world. I'll just stay up there with her and do just some breathing. Up in the front. <laughs> okay, none of that. All right, gotcha. Big sense. If you could bring one fictional person into existence, who would it be? Fictional person. Fictional person. Ooh. This is a tough one for me because <laughs> I'm not big on fiction. Um, Spawn. Sp oh, I like Sp Spawn. Okay, guys. This is another old moment. All right. So, y'all, back in the day, there was a character called Spawn. I'm going to put it here. Now, Spawn, he fought the bad guys, but he started out as a good guy. So 
basically his family got killed and he was out for revenge and then he turned into this little highlight of green and black slime fighting person <laughs> so that's who spawn is and i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna put it somewhere in here okay so why spawn why spawn um because he's good but bad so he right he, he's good but bad. So he, I mean, he's a health spa. There's <laughs> <So laughs> not much good coming from there, but he's 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 good because he saved the earth, yeah, multiple times. Mm -hmm. And you know, he, he's like my favorite superhero. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. Spawn. Mm -hmm. Oh, you gotta be super into. I'm definitely gonna put this up for y'all because I know some of y'all young is don't. Yeah. Like, why Spawn didn't he, is back. Why there. didn't he say Spider Man? <laughs> spawn. We're gonna. We're gonna they can't hold a candle way. to spawn. Actually, just, <laughs> <laughs> what's his name? What's the the um the fighter? He's well. He's an actor, but he's a fighter. He played Spawn. Oh yeah, Michael night. John White. Yeah, Michael John White. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all ever seen him like fight in real life? When he was like in real life, he, he does, was trying he does to show them chun. how to fight. He's a Wing Chun that practitioner. That man is wild. He does Wing Chun and Tai Chi. <laughs> well, see, they, they, that's why he's your favorite. That might be yeah. why you like Spawn because he yeah, plays Michael Jai. It might be, yeah, mm. yeah, because he, he's definitely a good practitioner. He's been to my father's school too. Oh, really? Yeah. All right, he invited yeah. him over, and mm -hmm. see, y'all know what? And it's somebody else. Who else? Your your dad happened to have just picked up the phone and was like, "Hey, come to my practice." Who yeah, was that? So it was uh, Chuck Norris. Chuck, Chuck Norris, Norris. Yeah. freaking Chuck Norris, y'all. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. For y'all young people, this episode is not for you. <laughs> yes, everything <fits. laughs> This is not for you, okay? So I'm going to have now. to just, I'm going to put Chuck, because y'all know, no, y'all don't know. Damn it. Look, I feel Chuck old. Norris, he was, he was one of those fighters that you would look forward to seeing, right? And he was in a movie with Bruce Lee, and Bruce Lee, like, ripped oh off God. his chest. <laughs> Broke his leg. Still fighting. <laughs> His dad picked up the phone, called Chuck Norris, and Chuck Norris can man, you know how big you gotta be, how important you gotta be for Chuck Norris to show up. Hmm. Y'all don't know nothing about that history. I'm not, we gonna <laughs> learn y'all something today on this Just for Clarity. All right, y'all. Well, this has definitely been another episode of Just for Clarity. We had a great time, James. So this is the shameless plug moment. Shameless plug. Give your people all your socials where they can find you. How they can practice Wing Chun with you? Like, tell us about it. Um, so, um, again, I'm actually uh, I'm old, so uh, you can find me on uh, YouTube, Sifu Darby. Um, I am on Instagram, uh, the Darby School. Um, I have a website, uh, www.thedarbyschool.com. Um, you can also find me on um, on uh, multiple uh, uh, Wing Chun advanced Kung Fu uh, websites. He's there, y'all. And um and uh, like I said, I really focus on um doing the YouTube channel. I'm trying to grow it. I'm trying to get as much possible views on it as possible. That means like, follow, subscribe. Also, from here to there. So now you got two things to do: like, follow, subscribe. All of us there. Also, y'all, he a gamer too. And on Thursdays, he had this relationship talk with this book. Let's 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 just do another little small little shameless plug moment. Tell us a little bit about your book. Um, so my book is called um, I'm Too Big for the Doghouse. Um, it it's, is a relationship wild, book <laughs> um, on how I will say it is a guide to teach men how to be a good husband um, without being a simp, <laughs> <laughs> without, without, without losing your man card. It's wild, um, y'all. I'm so, going to just say that. Um, it's some exploits into my my single life in the Marines and uh, going to multiple countries, um, but it's also a guide on a serious level to, mm. like I said, just an attempt to raise or lower the divorce rate. Right. So what about so on Thursdays? You, like Thursdays. Thursdays we talk about we talk about. Um, so I do gaming during the week. Yeah. Um, Thursdays is actually relationship therapy, mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. You can come in, meet me on Twitter at uh, Nightmares 3.30 um, at usually about 6, 6.30. Um, come in, ask any questions, learn anything um, about relationships, right. about um, understanding what the other 
the other sex is thinking or mm. speaking of. That perception. That is one of the biggest uh, issues that we have in relationships is we just don't understand our right. significant others. Mm -hmm. So come out, come see us on Thursdays and um, learn what your wife is talking about <laughs> and never have to say, what is she talking about? Well, why she think you'll that get way? it you get some understanding y'all all right so again it's nightmares what nightmares 330 all right you can find him uh on there and youtube all the stuff he's been given if you didn't catch it you have to rewind it <laughs> and then we'll also put it down here so y'all can get it as well so james thank you so much again you, for joining you, us so here much. it was such a pleasure it's it always awesome. a fun fun time when <laughs> when james and shawana come around baby we have a good time <laughs> but we thank y'all again for joining us for this session of just for clarity Peace. <laughs>